Love is Blind gave us a perfect example of a man who is full of crap. Jimmy! Jimmy! I'm coming for you. You are so full of crap! Now, does this mean that Megan... Oh my god, I'm just going to call her Megan because... A Chelsea or whatever her name is. Um, uh, whatever. <laughs> She's not off the hook. She needs to do a lot of healing. Way too insecure. But this is about Jimmy. If you haven't seen the show, good for you. You will never get those 11 hours back or however many it was. And the thing about Jimmy is he reminds me of every Southern man, frat man, guy that I grew up with, you know. Like, he reminds me of, like, the worst dudes from middle school, high school. Like, every time I go home for a visit, I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee, and this dude sounds so much like a southern white man. Like a rich one. Or not even rich one, but, like, one who, uh, like, upper middle class and above. And the confidence and the arrogance and the ignorance of some of these southern white frat men is just next level okay although i'm not saying it's any worse than like the like liberal progressive man you know the the misogynist who has a ponytail and wears patagonia and, and talk, talks softly and it's all about free open mind open spirit y'all are full of crap too but i know jimmy's i grew up with jimmy's and he is such a perfect example of the men, which is lots of them, that say one thing and do the opposite and confuse the crap out of you. I love you, I love you, I love you, you're beautiful, but let me make you feel ugly all the time. Like most men, I'd say all men, I can confidently, okay, 99.899% of men lie, lie. I'm not saying women don't lie, but I am saying that I, if there's one thing I've learned is just assume men are lying through omission, usually. Just gonna conveniently leave out some stuff so that I don't get in trouble with mommy because I'm a little king baby. I'm telling you, man, if they don't lie to your face, they lie through conveniently not telling you really important things that would make them look terrible and then they lose access to your body, your resources, your money, um, your free labor, which is worth gold because they're the gold diggers anyway. Jimmy, you suck. You don't belong, you don't, none of these girls deserve to be treated the way you will probably treat all women because you grew up in the place where toxic boy moms galore exist and entitled king baby daddies exist and jimmy is the perfect example and the fact that all the girls wanted him and were fighting over him apparently according to interviews because it's that southern draw it's that and just if you're not familiar with the south white people in the south who talk who talk like this and talk real sir and like sound like honey. That's like an aristocratic kind of uh, accent. And you can be 100% sure their ancestors owned people. Like there's no doubt about it, okay? The people who talk like this, a lot, most of my relatives, they live on farms. They talk like this. Those are um, usually, well, farm people sometimes have a lot of money. But in general, those are the people that get made fun of by everyone in the United States. Um, they, they, you know, they're dumb. And, you know, I throw on that accent to make fun of my people all the time. So Jimmy has like a leaning towards um, upper class accent, but still kind of in the middle. Anyway, I promise you, if he had been talking about that, like, like a lot of my relatives, those women would not be pining over him. The accent is a, cl a class thing. Kind of similar to the way of, like British people are. The posh accent versus the Manchester accent. I have learned a lot about that. Anyway, so Jimmy, you got that frat fraternity upper level, upper class-ish or somewhere close to it. Southern white man accent and the girls fell for it. But just like so many men, especially king baby white men in the South, I'm speaking about what I know. I'm sure other men fall into this category, but I'm specifically speaking about Southern white men because I know them so well. 
my dad was one, my grandpa, like, I know Southern white men. And they are very indoctrinated into patriarchy, which is tied to white supremacy, capitalism, anti-blackness, and all the things. Oh my God, look at you. Look at his lip. Look at your little lip. <laughs> By the way, he's asleep all the time because I record a lot of videos right after he eats dinner or lunch. Somebody told me to put him down once because he's clearly sick. And that's just a peek into the life of being someone online. Kill your dog. Okay. So let's get back to where it started with Jim. This is what J Jimmy says one thing, but means something else. So it's just like Matthew, you know, the little red pill dude who I tore apart a week ago or whatever. Jimmy says things out of nowhere that he doesn't mean. And then his actions reflect someone who doesn't mean that. And his little backhanded compliments reflect that he doesn't mean that thing. But then he reassures you, I love you, I love you, I love you. You're ah, la 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 la. Don't listen to these men. Watch what they do. Listen to these men, but don't believe these men. They're saying the thing you want to hear. Believe them when they say, the passive aggressive or like backwards weird, oh my God, what does he mean by that? V listen very closely. Because part of like white culture in the South is not saying what you mean <laughs> and not meaning what you say and having these little backhanded compliments and like avoiding conflict, but then also being unbelievably violent with your words without it looking like it. White women in the South are, we're amazing at this. But white men know how to do it too. Just notice that Jimmy says that he wants a direct woman, but he does not. That's why he chose, uh, well, besides thinking she's Megan Fox, that's why he chose Chelsea or whatever her name. I'm just going to call her Megan Fox. That's why he chose her. She was easy to get along with. She didn't challenge him. She made him feel good. She stroked his ego all the time. She was fun and laughed. And Jess, uh, I think that's her name, the, the mother, challenged that man constantly and he hated it. He thinks he wants that, but he can't handle it. Most Southern white men, like Jimmy, don't want that. They want women who pretend that we're happy, 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 happy all the time while full of rage, right? That's why Southern white women are so terrifying is because we, we get treated like crap from these men and we're just, mm, ha, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just have to go along with it. And then if you haven't dealt with all that and you haven't realized the systems of oppression that we are a part of in terms of being the, uh, the person with power who forks over everybody, we become violent. We are Karens and we terrify everyone else that we have power over. So it is a revolutionary act to be a Southern white woman and not constantly stroke the ego of these big king babies who want you to be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like Chelsea. That's why, that's why they fought all the time. Is he like, dang it, you were supposed to be easy. God, now you're turning into that Jessica woman who called me on my crap. And every time she challenged him, what'd he do? He threatened to leave. But she's so insecure. She's so desperate for validation. She doesn't want to be humiliated on TV that she comes back and apologizes because he flips it on her like, oh, you don't think I love you? Well, I can't be with someone who doesn't think I love them. Bye-bye. And like, he's so tactical, y'all. He puts her in her place because to be rejected by these men, to be humiliated by these men, a lot of women who are really insecure and haven't dealt with their trauma from their dads or whatever is going on here, right? They would rather put up with Jimmy's than be rejected by them. Let's, let's roll back and see how this all started. Somehow this man, Twitter says is actually this man or this man, this man, this man is one of my favorites here. Or this man, Python, who literally stole money chair like this man is so problematic if you haven't heard god he's the worst and everyone in tennessee worships him fuck you peyton this man ended up with a woman that he didn't want right out of the gate you can tell he's like crap 
So before I get into just how much a Jimmy sucks, let's talk about why Chelsea fell for him. Chelsea said right here after Trevor, you know, the mullet lying body weight lifter dude who was full of crap and had a girlfriend the whole time. Right after he told her he, that uh, he loved her, she said, I'm so used to guys being <laughs> mean to me. Like she was uh, sh like shaken by this man saying he loved her and how kind he was. Now we know it was all full of crap. All lies. All the men on this season suck, except maybe the dude who's obsessed with birth control. He may be okay, but all the rest of them suck. But one of them was, Trevor faked it really well, okay? He played the nice guy who was apparently not only not a nice guy and was with another woman. When she, well, I don't know if you saw this, but when she threatened to come out with the information that he's full of crap, he threatened to show, like, nude photos of her to her child. So Trevor's a bad dude, in theory. That's all, that's, I've just thought, there's no proof, but that's what she said. Like, the shock on all the women's faces, I'm coming for you later, Sarah Ann, was like, because Jimmy apparently was the one that all of them wanted. Like, apparently, all the women were like, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. And Chelsea was like, is this so weird? He's so easy to talk to, we have so much fun together. He's so emotional. She really likes him, but she likes Jimmy. She also that knows that she's competing with this woman for Jimmy and that all the women like Jimmy. And so this is where a lot of women get messed up is that we don't actually sometimes want the man who is best for us. Just like men, a lot of times who we like is way too tied to our ego and our trauma responses and our daddy issues or mommy issues or something, but it's not love. Okay? And when we actually get the validation that we want, it feels weird. We don't like it a lot of times. And this, I believe, was her wanting validation so much that she went with the guy that all the girls wanted and, you know, be beating um, this woman. It feels good, I'm sure, because Chelsea's already let us know she's very insecure about her body. And then the internet has not helped with that by shaming her. Now, I'm still like, don't understand what she saw in Jimmy. And even though I really disagree with her trying to be on this show to find um, a stepdaddy for her child, getting her child really, her daughter really invested in her mommy bringing home a new husband. Like stepdad is like literally the most dangerous person that a, a single mom can bring into that home. And she's going on a dating show with all these mostly crazy men. Like, have you seen the men on the last seasons? You thought you'd find a good dad on this one? Like what? And as much as she seems to respect herself more than, definitely more than Chelsea, and she had some pretty good lines and some good boundaries, like laying it out there, like if you choose me, I don't want you like looking at other women on Instagram and whatever, like, I don't know. Like she's putting it out there and he can take it or leave it. She did the same thing that so many women do. Like, oh my God, just so you know, like you're the only person. My body has a physical response. She says this so many times in the show. And it's like, do you know what like your nervous system does? Like if you have butterflies and it's electric to be around this person, you're so excited. That is usually not good. That's usually like your intuition in your nervous system going now now and she's like oh my god he's the only one that feels electric yeah because he's toxic you're the only person my body has a physical response to but not in the good ways and that's how i knew see stop doing this y'all you think you're being vulnerable and putting it out there is good no because a man like jimmy just used this to um triangulate he's like dang i got choices here I'm going to drag both these women along as long as I can until I'm forced to make a decision. Keep my options open. That's what men love to do. But she would put it out there. I've come to the conclusion that you're my person. Don't do this. Don't do this. When I was dating, um, until we are in a committed relationship that we have talked about, I don't owe you anything. I'm not telling you you're my person. Why would I do that? I'm single until I'm not. A lot of women just will start acting like a girlfriend and don't even realize that the, uh, the man is like dating all kinds of other people. And then they realize they're in a situationship. 
Because just because he's nice to you doesn't mean he actually wants commitment and like exclusivity. As if that's always the goal, because that's also like heteronormative, like purity culture kind of rules a lot of time. No, uh, no judgment if that's what you want or you don't want. Like everyone has their own thing that they want. Just saying. The idea that only committed long-term relationship with one person for like 60, 70 years, um, that doesn't seem to fit a lot of people's reality. But she said, I want to be the, the first round draft pick. But then she keeps saying, we have this electricity. Like she's really trying to play on this physical connection that they have. And like, this doesn't work. Trying to convince a man that you, you're special because you feel it. Don't do this. This gave Jimmy all the power. And an entitled man like Jimmy is gonna use that power. He's not gonna be like, wow, she likes me. He's gonna be like, cool. I got this one in the bag. I got that one in the bag. He's like, I'm genuinely concerned. Like when we touch each other, we're so electric. Like we might electrocute ourselves because that's like how powerful it feels. What? You're doing too much. Women do too much and we get screwed. Stop showing your hands because men are so manipulative. Talking about all this schmegual tension while knowing he's dating another woman. Don't give him all this because look at here. He's like, I'm excited about the last. And then she gave this some whole like future husband letter. What is this? What is this, Jessica? He did not earn this. Like trying to show a man that he's special so he will pick you was didn't work out for you. I don't even understand what. Like if I read this letter, I'd be like, but you wrote this years ago before you knew me. What does this have to do with me? How, like what? She's all pissed that he didn't feel special, but not to defend Jimmy for anything, but like, you wrote this for like a, a ghost. Who is this for? It's not for Jimmy. Write a letter to Jimmy. So, I mean, like that's what men do. Oh, you're such a good la 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 la, like fill in the blank and then you're replaceable. That Like I would have not been impressed by this. So I actually don't blame him for being like, what? But then he's like, Ugh. Like, I understand, like here he's trying to be like honest and I'm not, and I get it. I'm not going to say I love you before I feel it. But this guy is like breadcrumbing all along. He, he doesn't want to marry any of these women. But he also, men will like um, exploit our daddy issues and our pick me in, the, the, the inner pick me being like, she really, really wants to be picked. I mean, look at all this stuff, the letter, the you're my person, the electricity, blah, 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 blah. So he has the upper hand and he's reminding her, I'm not going to say something if I don't want to. She doesn't like hearing this. Again, I don't think he's wrong, but I also think this is a tactic and we, we don't see all the conversations. I've been on a National Geographic show that was not about love and drama and any of this stuff and seeing the editing, I was like, wow, y'all literally just changed the whole story with the editing. So just so you know, I, this, I know about this world from firsthand experience. And that was just a little peek into it. There's no, like they have probably thousands of hours of footage and we're seeing like 10 episodes or whatever. But this line, she did call him out. Well, how I feel about you goes without saying. This is the perfect double talk right here. And I love her, she's like, your feelings for anyone, especially me, never go without saying. I love that line. Because it does not go without saying. How am I supposed to? <laughs> know how you feel if you don't say it and what really this all this confusing conversation is about is that jimmy won't pick he won't decide and she wants to be the first draft pick and he's not giving her first draft pick energy she's starting to understand that now but he won't say you know i don't think so he's going to keep his up every couple that ends up coupling up at the end of this show whoever the last few couples are never make it Maybe there's an exception every once in a while, but they almost never make it. Because if this man didn't see you as special pretty quickly, like you're not the first draft pick. If he's like, oh, I don't know, I just can't decide, oh, honey, you've already lost. You have already lost. Jim, like whoever ended up with Jimmy was gonna get screwed because he just can't figure it out. Neither one of them are good enough to get his full attention, so he's gotta choose. And I love this. I'm not going to chase you. I'm not going to talk you into being with me. I mean, she's kind of been doing that, but she's finally like, okay, I'm about to get humiliated. I'm going to stop. I want to feel like the prize. I want to feel like you're pursuing me. Yeah, you want to feel that way, but you're literally doing everything. 
that he should be doing. She wants to feel like the prize. She wants to feel like he's pursuing her. But she's doing all the work. This is why you can't chase after men. I don't care how liberated you are. They're going to exploit you if you chase them. So she even called out Jimmy for being like, I think you like the idea of being with someone direct. He can't handle someone as intense and direct as her. Again, because he's used to like the Southern Belle. The Southern Belle who's just going to, you know, be agreeable and, you know, who does, who wants to be like the neck who influences but shuts her mouth. And she's like, I'm not that person. You don't actually want an honest woman. You want a, a yes man, but like a woman. My dog is outside right now, just in case you're wondering. He'll be right back. So she calls it out. She's like, I basically, I think it'd be easier for you to choose a woman who's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She's right. A woman who's gonna be more gentle with you. Now that is who Chelsea presented herself as. She was like, so agreeable. The the people pleaser, right? Like sh that's who she sold herself as. Funny, easy to talk to, like stroke his ego, all those things. And she's like, that's who you want. And she's right. He even said, I've never dated anyone that's direct like you. I think I can, but I'm typically, typically drawn to someone that lets me lead 100% of the time. Okay. This man's been watching red pill crap. Or actually, maybe not. Because a lot of southern white men are just naturally like, I talk like red pill. I want to be the big man. I want to be the leader. But they're not. It's all fake. Because a lot of times the passive aggressive Jedi mind tricks of the white women in the homes with those men are actually running the show. The men just, they just, these women let these men think that they're leading. Sorry, my mic wasn't working for a second. I love how she finally was like, you know, she's trying to get her self-respect back. It was like, you know what, buddy? Even if you decide you want to be with me, I don't even know if I want to be with you. And you're, if, if you choose me and I choose you, you're never going to make me feel this way again. That's ballsy, man. Where I'm left wondering how you feel about me. And this gives us some insight into what is going to drive Chelsea insane. He is going to tell on camera again and again and again i love you i love you i love you i'm here for you all i want is you but his actions will not reflect that so this right here is like good luck chelsea because that is this is her fate right here never knowing how this man feels about her so then we cut to his date with chelsea i know it has been so long since i felt this way about somebody Blah. look at her face she literally can't believe that she's being chosen look at this no one should react this way to being chosen by a man. But she's like, this is her, oh my God, I've won. This is her getting the crown at the Miss America pageant. Being like, and all the girls are congratulating her because she won. She can't believe it that she won. She finally won. And he's so confused because he thinks Megan Fox over there, who must surely be very confident in her looks if she looks like Megan Fox, Right? Because he thinks he's getting Megan Fox. And that's why he chose her. She's easy to get along with. She's a yes man woman. And she's hot. She's his type. I mean, Jessica said later on when she saw the people he's dated before, they all look like her. But look at Chelsea. I think I'm about to throw up. I literally thought you were going to tell me to go home. I want to puke. He's like, what? He's so confused by this reaction. It makes him feel good because he's like, wow, Megan Fox. She's this excited to be with me. Wow. And she's like, I really should be happy. And it is. It's a happy feeling. It feels so, so good to get picked. And it does. It feels so good to get picked. That's why... That's why we have so many pick me's. I was a pick me. I'm sure if you're watching this and you're a woman, you're probably a pick me too. At some point, we all have it in us on some level. You can't come out of patriarchy, be indoctrinated with patriarchy without having just a little bit of pick me. Even if you don't date men, if, whether it's your dad, your brother, your boss, your friends, somebody, it feels so good in patriarchy to be validated, to be validated by the men who think they're better than you, but you know they're really not, but everyone tells you they are. To get picked feels so good for a few minutes, and then it's gonna suck for her. Because when you get picked and you've sold your soul to the devil, let me rephrase that. When you have abandoned yourself and your, 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 your self-love, your self-respect, when you've abandoned yourself, 
to feel good and validated, which everybody wants for guys like this. It feels good for a couple minutes and then it's nothing but a mind fork forever. So then she says, I just want to make sure that you're 100% sure he's back from using the bathroom. Oh, hold on there, little lady. Hold on there. I didn't ask you to marry me yet. This is the bait and switch thing that's going to happen through a whole relationship. He tells her what she wants to hear and then follows it through with like, nope. Come here, come here, come here. Nope. Come on, come on, come on. Nope. You're screwed, Chelsea. He's like, but I am 100% sure I love you. I'm just not going to ask you to marry me yet. I'm going to make you wait another day. This is how men play on our insecurities. This man is going to exploit all of her. She is going to be so stressed out. If he really wanted her, he would have asked her to marry her right then and there. Because he's got competition. But no, 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 no. They love this man. They, they love to have the upper hand and to keep women in their place through constant anxiety. And that is what is literally going to happen for their entire engagement. So then he's like, okay, I definitely don't want the like direct woman. So he's going to break it off with her. And he's like, God, you know, it's just not fair. And I love it. She's like, shut up. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for you. And then she even says it at the very least, you owe me just one single ounce of directness. See, she has his number. I know that she's like all like tr triggered, like she's got all the butterflies and crap. And later on, she's going to do that stupid thing of like <laughs> trying to like get him. But um, she knows that this man is not an honest man. He is a double talker. He will never say what he means. She's calling him on this. And I love this. I, I love that she saw this. I can't believe she's still attracted to him, given what a coward he is. But whatever, we've all done it. And he was just like, all right, I hate you. <laughs> You're too honest with me. I need someone who's going to stroke my ego and <laughs> feed me compliments all the time. So uh, bye bye I love someone else. And she's like, mm, F, it's hard for me to feel sorry for you, brah. And tells him he ruined the opportunity for her. Like she get, lets him have it. She has the whole EpiPen thing being like, when you see me, you're going to choke and need an EpiPen. Now in a later interview, he was like, she's a mean girl. That's why we're not. And I know that this conversation apparently was like three hours and we're only seeing like, I don't know what, two minutes of it. So again, we can't really judge everything and what we're seeing. I'm just... I'm just using this as an example of what we've been shown, okay? But he called her a mean girl. He's like, she's mean. No, men, men like him don't like honest women, okay? We're mean. He needs someone who's going to be like, no, it's okay. It's okay. And then lash out crazy like Chelsea and then be like, no, 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 I'm sorry. It's my fault. And that's, that's exactly what he's going to get. And I love what she says here. If you need someone to hold your hand and guide you and coddle you, I will, that will, she will never be me and she will never be a woman like me, which only confirms more for him that like, he doesn't want a woman like this. She knows it. So right before Chelsea goes in there after this whole thing, um, Brittany, I think is her name. She warns her. She was like, get, Jimmy was not giving you answers <laughs> for a while. He's been kind of playing you. So look out for yourself, baby. And then Chelsea's like, I know what I've always dreamed of someone just loving me. So I'm going to skip forward here. Right before Jimmy, we see his the meat the final physical meat he's like you know there really needs to be a level of decent level of attraction to actually form a strong connection with someone i've never been sure more sure than jet oops so again he uses the wrong name look at him he's like oh now he probably thinks they're gonna edit this out <laughs> but of course like the producers and editors of this show are vicious. They're like, nobody, we're leaving this in. Oh, okay, let me start over. I've never been more sure that Chelsea is someone that I can. Not <laughs> too late, buddy. So then they cut to Chelsea and she says, sometimes, sometimes guys, I feel like they look for these petite girls. But Jimmy said, I don't care what you look like. Now, she set her up for this, herself up for this moment. And I know what this is like as somebody you know, a lot of times we literally set ourselves up to, to again and again and again to be with the same douchebag because we don't know any different. Anything different feels weird. And we just want someone to prove that all those people before that hurt us, like this will give us some sort of resolution. And it will with the right person if you've done the work on yourself. But I don't think she's done the work on herself. And she literally chose the same type of douchebag she's used to, the guys who are mean to her. Et voila! Because again, right before she's going to meet him, she wants to throw up. 
You know what? I, usually when I get butterflies or I want to throw up, it's because I know there's something wrong. My intuition is screaming at me. And she said, look, all day yesterday, she felt like she wanted to throw up. Her body is trying to talk to her. And she's like, no, 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 this is love. It's been a consistent feeling. So when the big reveal happened, this is Jimmy's face. This is, what's her face's face? Sorry, Chelsea. This scene was so uncomfortable to watch. Because she was so excited. She was like, and like acted like a little girl. Now I know that a lot of women do this. And I think this is a very US American thing, or at least a very white US American thing. I don't know. I love to hear other people's perspective. But like, we talk like babies a lot of times. I know that couples a lot of times kind of talk a little bit like that, but she's like over the top, like, oh my God, you it's insane and she does this throughout their relationship which is infantilize herself I honestly like I I'll just say this I don't ever see French women doing that I'd be curious I actually I probably should do some research on this. but the way that US American women a lot of times um, I, I, and I don't know if this is a, across uh, intersections or not but I know that white women do this a lot we're like and I know why. I know why. Because we, that, that whole high-pitched thing is a way to, like, soothe the baby. See, I just, I'm, I'm just a helpless cute little girl. And I used to do it, too. I used to, you know, like, be all cute. Be cute. Infantilize myself for the egos of men. Or if I get called out and to not get in trouble. That's another video. This, like, really, like, cute, 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 like, very girly, like young girl thing. And again, like US, white, like the, the patriarchy and all that stuff, purity culture in the, in the South is very strong. And it's directly tied to like, okay? That's why they're obsessed with younger women. And so women will do this, we'll do this to ourselves. Y'all, this is so deep. Anyway, so he's like, you're gorgeous. But then he says this. I mean, it wouldn't matter anyway, but you're gorgeous. Just like that little psycho uh, Matthew, this man says things so like out of left field because this is actually what he's like, well, uh, it wouldn't matter anyway. I really like you. You're gorgeous. Look at that. You're so handsome. Oh my God. Oh my God. She kept saying, oh my God. Oh my God. She's so relieved that he's good looking, which I don't find him attractive, but okay. You look so squeals. Squealing, she's squealing a lot. Again and again, you look so good. And then Jimmy's like, you look good. <laughs> Upper hand. I want to pass out. Like this is a woman who wants to throw up, pass out, like all these things. Remember, throw up. Her body is not doing okay when she's around this man. And what's he doing? Sighing. <laughs> I mean, she just, you're so handsome, you're so handsome. Oh my God. Over and over. He's like, I like your dress. It looks good on you. And then this, I actually like thought that you were lying to me for a little bit. Because I got it in my head about, and he was about to talk about the Megan Fox. And she's like, oh, you need my tattoos? He's like, no. I mean, he goes along with it. No, not that, but like other things. Like, why aren't you Megan Fox? This man, right away, I, I, I knew this was going to be bad. This is one of the worst meets, uh, physical first time meetings of the whole show. He's like, mm. he's saying all the things, but his body language and then his little like backhanded compliments. Mm -mm. Look at this. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to let you go. Look at his face. <laughs> Look at that. He looks like a psycho. <laughs> You're far. Like this, I mean, this scene goes on and on. It is so long. She's like, I love you. I love you with my whole heart. Like, yep, needed to hear that. This, again, this man doesn't really care about having a partner. He is a very needy man. And we're going to see just how needy soon. Who needs constant validation, constant touch, constant compliment, but is very stingy with how much he gives that out. Because if he gives it out too much, then she may feel comfortable and safe in that relationship and he needs to have the upper hand like so many men so he plays on her insecurities and never wants her to feel too comfortable these kind of men are going to ruin your life
and your nervous system, which will take years off of your life. Like Chelsea, like she's only, she's gonna, end, this show is like, I don't know, a month long or I don't know, however many, what, however many weeks it is. She is destroyed by just being with this man for a handful of weeks. And then he does this. These last couple of days have been like real hard. I mean, I was like eager to see you. I re but I really thought this morning about what I wanted and I almost went home. This, he is setting her up for what she should expect from now on. To never feel comfortable, confident, secure, or safe in her relationship because he is a uh, flight risk. And it's like, he's basically like, I'm not attracted to you, but he can't say that. So he's like, wow, you're, you know, you're gorgeous and wouldn't matter. But he's basically setting her up to be on edge and nervous and, you know, be very careful about how and when she calls him out because he's out the door like that. Because he thinks he's the prize. So when he says that, she's like, uh, not anything against you. I don't know, like, don't get all crazy taking it personally. <laughs> Just like, this whole experiment has been hard for me, choosing between all these beautiful women. I had to make a choice. It's so hard. Look at their body language here. She's like, oh my God. Just so drained emotionally from having to choose between you and another woman. I say all that in the best possible way because you kept me here. No, bro. You don't want to look like a fool on national television. So basically this man is trying, he is like already, he's basically creating his exit, right? He do, he's going to go along with this whole experiment to get airtime so that he doesn't look like a fool. Because if he saw her and was like, never mind, fork you, he would be a villain. And this man doesn't want to be a villain. So he's really, really good at manipulating her and us. Don't fall for it. He's like, are you okay? <laughs> She's like, mm -hmm, um, but it's just like, I don't want to hear that. Uh, I'm sorry, I feel like I can tell you anything. Oh, this is such a classic. This is how men, and especially if they're like Jordan Peterson nudes, they'll be like, I thought I could trust you. I thought you wanted me to be honest. I'm just being vulnerable. I'm just telling you how I feel. Don't you want me to be honest with you or would you rather me lie? That is, that is the, that's what he's saying without saying it. And so he's already gonna like punish her for saying how she feels from hearing that he literally want, almost left this morning, which would make anyone feel insecure. And he's like, what? I'm just being honest. Men do this all the time. I, mean, I know it's not just men, but especially if they know, do not date if you are this insecure. She needs to not date anyone for a while. She needs to do some more healing, but he smells it. And he's like, mm, she's got low self-esteem. She's a little insecure about her body, probably because she's had so many awful things said to her. And now even more so from people on the internet. And she kind of set her up for this disappointment by rigging the game, right? Because he didn't ask her what she looked like. I mean, maybe he didn't, we didn't see. But she, out of nowhere, was like, does anyone tell you that you look like a movie star? And he's like, oh yeah. And she's like, because people tell me that. Let's just revisit that scene. Because out of nowhere, she asked that question. And then he's like, well, what, what, you know, what, what? She's like, I get one person. And it's just because I have dark hair and blue eyes. You've already rigged it. You've already, like, you, you did this. This is, you broke the love is blind thing. You started this. You, a lot of times it's the men who do this, but she did this. She did this. When she said that, he started taking notes. She's like, well, don't get too excited, okay? But like, because I don't see it. This is what other people say. She's already baited him there. Of course, he's going to make her tell her. Um, she brought it up. And then she said this. I don't know. You know, it's like that MKG's wife or girlfriend or whatever. Like, you know. I don't even like know anything about these people and I know. I don't want to know anything about these people and I know. So she's pretending she doesn't know. Look at his face. Megan Fox! This is the happiest we've seen yet. Just to be clear, you're saying you look like Megan Fox? Then she tries to take it back, but you can't take it back and you know you can't. No, no, it's just because I have li light eyes and dark hair. You knew exactly what you were doing here. This, you were trying to cheat. Now, having said all this, she does not deserve the way he is treating her. But you played on this man being shallow because he is. You exploited that in him and it worked. And now you're stuck with this loser because this man, this is the, the minute he decided he wanted her and not that mom.
this man doesn't want to be a dad. Not to someone else's kid. And he has every right to not want to date her because she has a kid. I'm sorry, but that is a deal breaker and it should be for some people. I wouldn't date a man with a child. We're not compatible. He has this agreeable, insecure woman who looks like Megan Fox. This is the moment he decided it's her. I want you to pay attention how this man's going crazy. He's like, oh my God, I hit the jackpot. <laughs> he's pacing. He's like, his whole energy changed when he was like, cool. The woman who's not direct, who's not going to challenge me, who is, you know, what, like just strokes my ego, also looks like Megan Fox. Okay, I'm done with the mom. Bye-bye. This, this right here. He even says this. Can we get married? And then he takes it back, back sees. He went straight, he hadn't even said, I love you yet. And he's like, Megan Fox, can we get married? You're it. And then he realizes, hold on, calm down. I gotta drag her along and put her in her place, right? This man will never ever let her feel like she has the upper hand because he always wants her to feel unsure of their relationship so that she will give in to any of his demands because that is what so many men do. A secure, confident woman will leave someone like this. So when he sees what she looks like and he's angry now that he made his decision based on a lie, he's gonna punish her for the whole rest of the show. And he's also going to use the threat of leaving her to make sure that she doesn't call him out too much because he also knows that a woman like this wouldn't dare be humiliated. He wants to have that moment at the altar where he can say no to her, you know, whatever. He knows he's gonna look like the villain now if he rejects her based on her looks. He's not dumb. And every time he drops a line like this, being like, what, I'm, I was gonna leave, but I didn't. What's wrong? I'm just telling you the truth. She's gonna be like, oh, crap. And then she is going to look crazier and crazier as time goes on. She's gonna look more and more insecure and needy. And she is those things, but this, she is, this man makes her look awful because this is what he's gonna do the whole time. Cause she's like, well, you can tell the truth, but like, I just don't wanna hear that you're about to go home. She's not saying you can't say that. She's, she's, she's reacting to the fact that he was about to abandon her after all this, after she said no to the guy, the nice guy who actually ended up being even bigger trash than Jimmy. That would have sucked. She's just being honest. He's like, no, it's not because of you. Like, come on. This is his way of being like, stop being crazy. Stop being so, taking it so personally. Stop being so sensitive. Don't be so dramatic. Like this is, without saying that, that's what he's saying. Like, I don't get it. Why are you so upset? You're the reason why I'm here. Look at her face. She's like, mm. And then anytime he feels like uncomfortable or called out, he just keeps saying, I'm so sweaty. <laughs> so she again was like, that is really not what I wanted to hear. And she doesn't want him to wake up one morning and just decide that he screwed up with this decision. But that seed is planted the moment they meet. I'm sorry, within the first minute and a half of them meeting. And then he's going to do things again and again. He's going to threaten leaving. One night he's literally going to leave and spend the night somewhere else. He almost leaves a second time. He just talks about leaving all the time. I wonder why she's afraid. She's like, is, is it what you expected? This? Look at his face. Um, well, you told me a thousand things and we sort of hit on looks. And then they cut to him being like, yeah, she lied to me. She told me she looked like Megan Fox. Now to her credit, she said it was just her eyes and her hair color, but he wasn't listening to that. He was like, Megan Fox, Megan Fox. Again, I'm so sweaty. Look at this. But you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. I'm very attracted to her kind of, I can work with that. Can you imagine what she's thinking when she reads this? Where she sees this? I can work with that. <laughs> what is she just a pile of clay? And you're just gonna like work, work with it somehow. But to her face, this is what he says. I think you're gorgeous. Double talk. He's literally saying to the producers like, I guess I can work with that. To her face, I think you're gorgeous. Not that it would matter. And then he's like, literally every conversation I had with you was the easiest thing. So you don't challenge me and you're not direct like that mom lady. And it was the easiest I've ever done in my life. And that makes me, that makes me forget the other problems, I guess. Like the fact that I'm not attracted to you and I don't want to be here anymore. You were easy to talk to and gassed me up. So I guess I can look over all the other problems. But I'm happy to see you. I freaking love you. 
Okay. Oh my God, I'm so sweaty. <laughs> I'm so sweaty. No, look at her. Look at her. She's finally getting that moment of being proposed to. Oh my God. And then he's like, I've never done this before. Wink. And she's like, okay, well, I guess I'll help you out because I'm a pro. Because remember, that was the other point of contention. He didn't like that she'd been married before. And if the other woman hadn't dropped the bomb of being a mom after he thought that she was like the best candidate, he's like, he's just like throwing this back at her face. Like this man is gonna, mm, mm, mm. But this is also a big insecurity of hers. So of course she is laughing at herself so that we don't laugh at her. Look at this. And I can't wait for this journey. And he's like, I don't care what you look like. <laughs> Again, sounds so much like Matthew. I love you for who you are. I'm, I'm, as long as you don't change the person you've been, i.e. easy to talk to, gasses me up, doesn't challenge me, is not direct. I can deal with your looks as long as you don't turn into that, like, like that Jessica woman who called me on my crap. As long as you're easy and know that I'm going to lead, no man is ever leaving, leading me. And I'm not leading them. I want a partner, not a president. But if you go back to being the easy person that you were in the pods, I'll be the happiest person. And there's a lot of things this man does to make her feel insecure. Like he constantly like makes her feel uncomfortable for being in his space. This is such a tactic. This is like, you know, if the show didn't force them to, to live together, he probably would have been like, you can stay over, but you can't have the keys. That's that energy. He also, she has to call him out multiple times for him not giving her any affection. You didn't kiss me once yesterday. Y'all are engaged. Like this is when you're supposed to be so excited to be around each other, but he's just like, ugh. And then calls her needy in a different argument, one that they're discussing now. He calls her needy for wanting to be re reassured with affection. And it's not like she's asking him to do it all the time. And she even tells him about, you always tell me that how much it's important for you to tell me that I love you all the time and to be affectionate with you and to give you compliments. But like, he's like so confused because he's like, well, why would you expect that from me? That's what I should get. <laughs> and anytime she calls him on something, he says, oh, well, you just get so emotional over what I said. This is, this, let me tell you what this means. You're being dramatic. Don't be so crazy. That, that, when he says emotional, that's what he means. Why are you getting so emotional? I just, you know, made you feel ugly. I just didn't come home last night. I left. Like, why are you so emotional? And after all this, he's like, look, I plan to be with you forever. I love you. And I want nothing more than a future with you. Double top, double top. Bop, 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 bop. Don't believe, like, he's literally... His actions do not align with any of this, but he's on camera. But even if he wasn't on camera, he wanted like a, a, a placeholder. This is what he would be doing. Men who say crap like this, but then their actions don't align. You are a placeholder at best. That's the best scenario that you are. She says this so many times. You drive me nuts. She says this all the time. I understand why she feels nuts. Actions and words are not aligning. But she's the one who looks nuts on this show. So then he introduces him, her to his BFFs who are women. Now, it's okay if he has female friends, but what we learn later on is that he is a, he has hooked up with each, at least one of these women who is one of his best friends. She does not know this yet, but I want you to pay attention to this conversation because these two women, uh, they remind me a lot of Southern women speak. I really think that one of the reasons why I have a hard time trusting women is growing up around Southern white women. Again, it's like decoding every sentence. Like you said you like this, but something doesn't seem right. We are taught to not to say what we mean or mean what we say. We are, there's like, my husband was so confused when he went to the South. He was like, this feels so violent. But everyone's smiling and I was like, that is exactly what it is. So she was nervous to meet these two besties of his. Like, what? Silly, silly goose. Cause they're girls. She knows how women are. We are vicious sometimes and play mind games too. Just, it looks different. Like, no, they're nice girls. I wouldn't be, me I would be friends with mean girls like that mom who's honest. These are his best friends, but he's only known them for two years. Bro, why can't you have, why don't you keep friends? That right there is a big red. You've only known them for two years and they're your, 
And you also, which we learn later, he's hooked up with one, like, who are your friends? Probably doesn't have any. Probably all women who do things for him. Like, well, they I mean, they probably won't say anything, tell me anything. And he's like, no, I'm terrified they'll say too much. Like, I forked one of them. Too much, huh? What do you mean? And she's like, I'm a little scared. You should be. Look at these two. Look at these three. I'm not against platonic friendships at all. Do not take my words out of context. It's this guy.